Yeah, let's kick off the final 30 minutes of the Sportsman Zone with football. Jamaica fell 2-1 to Qatar in their international friendly in Austria. The reggae boys went behind 2-0 at halftime, but Shamar Nicholson scored a 61st-minute penalty to make the last half an hour interesting against the 2022 World Cup hosts. Now, the Amir Helgrimson court side could not find an equaliser. The result means the boys are yet to win under the guidance of Hal Grimson. These are the players utilised by Hal Grimson in today's matchup. So Jamali Waite in goal for the Jamaicans. Lembekisa, King, Mariapa, Bell, Dejon Richards in that lineup. Russell Latibodier making his debut. Kareem Paris, Kahim Paris, Scorey Burke. Didn't get on the score sheet today though. And Shamar Nicholson. And then as substitutes, they had Kevin Lambert coming on. Daniel Johnson. Um, Philippe came on as well. So did Deshaun Bernard. Brown Blake. And also on the bench, Cover and Boyce Clark for the Reggae Boys. Well, let's discuss with our in-house analyst, Lejay Williams, what happened in today's contest with the Reggae Boys. Lejay, first of all, what did you make of today's performance? Well, I, I don't think it was particularly good. I think there were a lot of issues with not only the, the lineup, probably a lot of issues with the team selection as well. I, I have one big gripe. You know, I, it, it's national football, international football. Jamaica has a provisional squad of 20 going into the Gold Cup. You have a lot of big name players, Leon Bailey, Antonio Pinnock, Gray, Bobby Reed, Jamal Lowe, Junior Flemings, all of these great international players are best players. Why are they not playing in these friendlies? But the coach explained that yesterday. Um, he went through in detail to explain why each of them, he spoke about Bailey um, and uh, Mikhail Antonio having injury concerns and needing the time um, to work on those and it was best that they stayed with their individual trainers and fix those issues. He spoke about Ethan Pinnock having to stay with his wife because of, well, she just had their fourth child. Damien um, Lowe. Damien Lowe, he's injured. Damari Gray still waiting on his papers to come through 100%. So, he, he, he went through in detail, and as I said yesterday, it's one of the things I like about Coach Al Grimson, that he comes to these press conferences and he gives you all the information. Um, whether you agree with some of it is no another issue. So whether you think that, because there was also a question of commitment that came up at yesterday's press conference with, I suspect some people thinking that just maybe some of the players are not committed enough to the cause to be at this training camp and so on. But what is clear is that Coach Al Grimson and the Jamaica Football Federation have accepted um, whatever explanation has been given to them by the individual players as to why they can't be at the camp and why they can't be involved in these international friendly matches. And, and that's where I, I would like to disagree. I, I don't think that it, it's not feasible for coincidentally all of our b better players, all of our bigger players to not be available for these two games. And then I think it causes a, a deeper issue when we get into the tournament itself being the Gold Cup. Because I, I'll get onto the tactics in a second, the, the issues I think that we will have in the Gold Cup. But then now when you're talking, to, it, it's not scrimmage. It's not five-a-side football, it's not plug-and-play football. You, these players can't just come in now into a faltering system and then expect to just come in, make a change, come in, make a big impact against teams that have been playing together, teams that have been training together, teams that already have a better tactical and personnel-wise understanding of football. They have that advantage over us already. Our first game is against the US on the 24th of June. If we're just going to come and Demar Gray gets, gets his passport magically two days before the game, he comes into the lineup, he comes into the squad. That does nothing for us. Yes, he's a player of quality, but that's not how football works. You can't just randomly insert someone. It's not cricket, it's not basketball. But that's what's going to happen, though. They're going to and and that, that's, that's the big problem I have with Jamaican football. So, so, so here's my question, and I, and I think the issues are separate. So there is one issue in terms of why the players are unavailable 
for this specific training camp. And as I said, the coach has gone to great lengths to explain in each individual situation why they are not there. Whether you believe that or not is up to you, but clearly the coach and the JFF believe whatever the reasons that have been put forward. So that is issue number one. Issue number two is if the players are unable to make it to the training camp and they're unable to play the two friendly matches, do you then take them to the World Cup? Or do you say to yourself, these are still our best players and they are still our best chance of doing well at the Gold Cup? And that's the question I want to put to you, Leger. Let us say you are in the, co the, the position of Hemeril Grimson. You believe or the information that you have suggests that these issues are legitimate why the players cannot be part of the camp and therefore are missing these two practice matches. How do you then deal with that as far as putting a squad together for the CONCACAF Gold Cup? And especially given everything you've just said about needing time to gel as a unit, especially when you have fresh players coming into the setup. I mean, certain players have to play at the end of the day. But those are the players who are missing the camp. Yeah, it's I, I don't think all of, I don't think all of them have to play. I, I don't necessarily want to get into the specific players, I think. But should... I think it's important to get into specific players because, because otherwise uh, it becomes a generic conversation. And I'd like to know what you think and who adds to the setup because from what we saw today, and I know social media went wild about Losing versus Qatar. Jamaica has been seen as a powerful team. You all have improved year after year. And that's why everybody's disappointed. That's why you are frustrated at this point. So I'd love to hear who you think gets into the team and why. Well, I think, first of all, Leon Bailey has to play because I think he's amongst our best players, one of our best talents. And, and I've seen in previous times that he is committed to the cause. Pinnock, I think he also has to play because he's our best defender, period. Um, Bobby Reed, Junior Flemings, also likewise in terms of my explanation. I don't think anyone else, yes, Antonio is a, a, a Premier League striker, yes, he has done this and that, and yes, he may need his rest, this or that, but I think on prior evidence, what we have seen from Antonio in terms of our setup, it is not conducive to success. He shows it's up. It's not. I don't think so because. At the end of the day, you know. In terms uh, of what? In terms of his ability? Or are you now talking about team chemistry in terms of when he, he joins the squad? When, when he joins the squad, because I think that you should only integrate a player or try and force to integrate a player into a team if it immediately fixes a deficiency. So, so let me ask you something. You don't think that Mikhail Antonio has done well when he's represented Jamaica? I do think that he has done well, but I don't think he has done well enough to warrant only wanting to show up and pop up when you have more important games. I don't think anyone is bigger than the JFF program. Right. Is what I'm trying to say. And I don't think that you can just pop up when you want to and it's going to be plug and play. So here's the reason. Especially with a new coach. So here's the issue here, right? What is clear is that you are not believing that the, the issues that the coach has pointed to why the players are not in camp. Not, all, not, not all of them. That you don't think they are legitimate. Not all of them. And he also personally. thinks that by them not being there, it affects the chemistry of the team. And the chemistry points it leads me to my, my next point, which is the tactical mm -hmm. play of Jamaica. And I think it's really poor. Like today, for example, we played a 4-4-2 formation. 4-4-2 formations are not conducive to attacking football, which is fine. I have no problem with Jamaica being defensive, staying in a block, counter-attacking. That is fine. It's international football. You have to work with what you have in order to move forward and get results. That's okay. But if we're then going to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams and pass around the ball where when you play a 4-4-2 formation, it's just simple math, simple understanding of angles. You cannot overload any side of the field without losing something in the middle, whether it be one of your strikers going across, you're losing a striker in the middle. Whether it be one of your central midfielders going across, you're losing something in central midfield, you're easily counted upon. Then in addition to that, we're playing this 4-4-2, which should be solid defensively, and we're not solid defensively at all. Both of Qatari's goals came in the exact same way, overloading on the flanks. And the great benefit to playing 4-4-2 is having structure on the flanks. That's what it's there for. If you see the goals that Qatar scored, 
it's them overloaded, moving the ball from side to side really quickly, and then overloaded on our, our wingers. It's either the wingers are dropping, and I think that has to be systematic. And then in addition to that, you can see the evidence of what I'm putting forward. We, we don't score. We score one. We score a penalty today against Qatar. We score a wonder goal against Mexico. And in Mex against Mexico, we played well, yes. But there are obviously some serious tactical issues that need to be resolved, and they cannot be resolved without the help of our best players being there to implement them. So again, though, <laughs> I hear you, and again, I, I agree with you. But as I said, I also think the issues are are separate because if you're Haimahal Grimson. You have to work with what you have for these two matches. You have to get the best out of what you have for these two matches. And then you move into the Gold Cup and you work with what you have there. The thinking is the cast is going to be significantly better um, for the Gold Cup. So should we, and we had this conversation yesterday, Mariah, should we be judging this reggae boys setup or should we be judging reggae boys teams almost as specific units rather than as an overall program given the fact that you're almost looking at different setups different starting teams um different benches as you move much much by match but ricardo that's why i say that it, it's not scrimmage it's not something where you're working with one set of players now yeah. and, and this is putting the, the 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 validity of what they're saying aside it's not something that they can just, all right, we'll have these players now working with them tactically for this setup. So it's not something like, okay, we had Kaim Paris on the field today, we're going to put in Leon Bailey and we're automatically be going, going to become better. Yeah. Football doesn't work like that. Having said that, though, if, if you look at most of the leading players, they have played together enough for the last three or four years, you would think. Under different management, though. That's what, yeah. Yes, and under different his... management, but there is still a certain chemistry that would be there. There is still a certain understanding that would be there on the part of these players. So you would think they would be able to adapt easier than, let's say, these players who are just coming into the setup now. So let's take, for example, the, the CONCACAF Nations League against... Mexico, which I thought was one of our better games in a while, and that was the closest we had to a frontline team. So when you put a team out there similar to that in the Gold Cup, wouldn't you then be expecting significantly better performance, even with the deficiencies that everyone can clearly see exists in terms of the preparation and build-up? I, I can't answer that question with, with any sort of definity because they haven't proven otherwise you said that they were playing together before so they would have had chemistry they played together and failed they failed to qualify for the world cup but that does not mean that many of the performances in and of themselves were failed performances but i still think and I there were performances Legit. that you can build on and I, and I completely understand what you're saying in terms of, okay, so you didn't qualify for the World Cup and you automatically put that down as a failure. But you look at many of those matches and how we played. In another campaign, on other days, results could have gone differently. There are several of those matches in the World Cup campaign that you can look back on and you can say, that's a match we should have won instead of drawn. That's a match we probably should have drawn instead of of lost and so from that standpoint i don't know that it is as bad as you are making it out to be but right ricardo now. you're also you're also ignoring the fact that everything that you're saying is correct you know but all of that was under different management mm. and the thing you is these are the purpose of the purpose of these games Qatar, exactly. Jordan. It's to it's build to up going into chance. that. Of course it is. But if, you, if the players are unavailable, what then do you do? You, you, you have to create the best situation with what you have. But Leger's point is that it should not be okay that these players uh, uh, are unavailable. He no, wants no, 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 a no, system. No, 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 no. It's not... It, Leger's point is not just that it should not be okay. But he Leger wants to is see not them accepting playing. that the reason they are not there or the reasons are valid reasons. He is not accepting that and that's where the problem is. Because if you accept 
that the reasons they are not part of the camp and they are not playing these friendly matches are valid reasons, then you, you don't start the conversation the way that Legit has started the conversation is the point I'm making. Speak for yourself, but I, I, but I, I'm personally saying, if someone shows you who they are, you have no option but to believe them. We know exactly, we have seen Antonio be with the Jamaica team flying before a game and fly out as soon as the game is done. We've seen Antonio... But we've also seen Mikhail Antonio come into the Jamaica setup and perform brilliantly. Because he's better than most of the people. That's not... That's but, not but that's the reason why and he's brilliant, been selected. And brilliant, and brilliant is subjective, first of all. You get me? So It's subjective to what you have. And if Mikhail Antonio is still one of the best players that we have in the setup. Now, here's the thing. I completely understand that thinking about team chemistry and everyone gelling and you think oh yes it should all be the same for everyone it cannot be the same for everyone Michael Antonio is a highly delicate player his entire history is one of injuries that's part of the reason he has had special requests of the Jamaica Football Federation over time and if those requests are being granted, I can't have an issue with that, especially if when he turns up, he is performing well. And I know that there are several persons who have, who, who are thinking like Lejay, that, oh yes, he should come in three weeks before like everyone else. But if he turns up and he performs, he has a legitimate reason for being unable to be there. Personally, I don't see the problem. Ricardo doesn't have to play. He can go and train and get the same tactical nuances, the same tactical instruction that everybody else is getting. I'm okay. People, when you're at a club and he's injured, you still have to turn up and go to the club and get the same instruction that everyone else is getting. It's not, it's not different than international football, yes, but where you have less no, of no, a no, time no, no. to work no, with no, the no, players. No. But the difference is, at the club level, they have the infrastructure to take care of that player when he gets hurt and when he has particular issues. And the Jamaica team. Football Federation, as the coach pointed out in the press conference yesterday, does not have all the equipment to take care of these injured players in the way they deserve to be taken care of. And that's maybe the part that we're shying away from and maybe the biggest problem My that we have here, why the players are not at the camp and are not involved in these matches and are not getting the same instructions at the same place, as you pointed out, as the other players who are there. Well, coach really said that yesterday. When asked about Damien Lowe's injury, he did explain that he'll be treated and they'll be monitoring that, right? My issue, and I go back to the same point, is that I at least want to see that the team that will be suiting up for the Gold Cup at least play one match together. I don't want that the first time I look at the Jamaica Red Against Boys, the USA, the best against, team in CONCACAF. And I think it's okay to feel like that. We, have, um, we are emotionally involved when it comes to the Caribbean teams, and you want the best for them. And I, I agree, the situation is not what it is. But if I was sitting at the top of the GFF, I would say, you know what? Take the time. Do what you need to do. But I need to see you at least in one of these friendly matches so we get a proper gauge, Ricardo, as to what we're going to see against uh, your uh, 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 Ricardo is most definitely right with what the issue is, you know. The, great, the greater issue is it, it is with the JFF and their organization because there is no reason why any federation with the sponsorship that they have and everything, they shouldn't be able to take care of these players. So, well, well I don't know that, that there's no reason, but that's a whole that, different that, conversation that, that, because I don't know what the books my of the issue, JFF looks like. So. My issue as an analyst is on the field solely. Yeah. Is that, that's my if, only issue. I would say it can't be, though. It can't be on the field solely because the issues affecting this team and this setup are not just on the field issues. So, Ricardo, but that's a, but that's a good, big issue. You're good with seeing the Jamaica Reggae Boys team. It's, not, it's not a matter of being good. The, the, there's nothing new about this. The problem doesn't start two or three weeks before the CONCACAF Gold Cup. And this is where I would go. What you need to ensure is that over a two to three year period, the, 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 your, your leading group of players are playing enough matches over time 
that the two weeks in the build-up to the CONCACAF Gold Cup does not become such a big issue when you have a few players on the injury list um, and you're unable to bring them in and give them the type of support that they require and so they have to stay with their personal physios and teams and so on to ensure that they recover effectively. He so for that. me the issue is not just the two week build up. The issue stems from what you do over a two to three yeah. year period and that for me is what needs to be addressed more than anything else. You say that and the problem seems bigger now. Of course it is. Yeah, like <laughs> anyway, much bigger. We're, we're out of time. We're, we're far out of time and over time. Lijay, thanks very much. I'm pretty sure you enjoyed the game today. And by the way, I didn't think the, I didn't think the performance was as bad as Lijay is making it out to be. Yes, we struggled to create chances. Um, but by the way, Dijon Whisper Rich has had a pretty good game, um, worked a few really good plays with Shamar Nicholson, who should have finished at least one of them. Um, when he pretty much had a close to empty goal. But anyhow, we take a break. We'll be back with Interactive.